This turns a man off. Hey, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And ladies, welcome back today with, of course, guest expert, Dr. John Gray. Hi, Dr. John Gray. Hi, so happy to be with you again. I am so excited for you to illuminate our audience about what is actually happening and what are the big mistakes they're making that keep men at bay. And of course, ladies, so those of you who don't know Dr. John Gray, which would I be shocked because you'd be living behind, behind, I don't know, the moon. Like he has, of course, written a Beyond Mars and Venus, right? This is like your newest well, book. It, it, I wrote Better from Mars. Most people are familiar with that, haven't read yeah. it, but they're familiar with it. Now this is beyond Mars and Venus because men and women have evolved beyond traditional roles. Women are more masculine, men are more feminine, but that actually, if you go too far out of balance, then you, you suffer and you don't end up being in love and having good connection and having better relationships and happiness in your life. Exactly, exactly. So let's dive right in because the women are sitting at the edge of their seats. Like, what? how do they turn men off without even knowing about it? Well, the first step is very quickly why men are drawn to women. And then it becomes obvious what turns men off. What men are drawn to women is anything a woman says or does or doesn't do that will stimulate a hormone in a man called testosterone. Men bond when they're, when they're in a situation, their testosterone levels go up. Like think about sports. Uh, men are so bonded to their sports team, right? The, the guys who are into sports. And that's because when their team is winning, their testosterone goes up. And even when their team loses, they're still bonded to that team. And they're going to think, oh, if you'd only done this, if you only done this. You see, they bonded because they're part of that team and the team is constantly solving problems. You know, often women say men don't have emotions, but watch these guys when they're watching a football game, you know? <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, oh, bummer, down. No, so they're bonding that way because in a, in a game, you've got to do this, you should do that. Or what's he going to do now? This is all danger and solution, danger and solution, danger and solution. That helps build testosterone in men. So in a sense, you need to be danger and a solution. Okay, he needs to find a solution to make you happy. <laughs> and when he can't make you happy, when he can't make you happy, because anytime I'm interacting with my wife or my children or the world, there's always the fear I'll fail. That's the man's biggest, biggest fear. Okay. So the danger is I don't want to fail. So right now in this interview, you know, we want to do this short little interview. I got a lot of things I could say, but the danger is that I can't, I got to find the right things to say. And then I solve the problem. So there's danger and solution to bang. My testosterone goes up. I bond. I want to be with you. I like spending time with you. So what inhibits that is when he doesn't feel there's danger, but, and that means if you're too easy, mm -hmm. too easy, he's not going to bond with you. And if you're too difficult, he's not going to bond with you mm -hmm. because the danger is he's now, he can't solve. So he gives up. Mm -hmm. So you need to give him, you need to be a problem that he can solve. <laughs> and when you're a problem that he can't solve, he can't bond with you. Now we've done other talks where I teach women how to be vulnerable, vulnerable is letting someone affect you. Not being vulnerable will turn a man off. Okay, this is the whole thing. When, when a man doesn't feel I can do for you, and this is sort of paradoxical thinking because you think, and this is when you don't understand how men and women are different, you would think if I give him more, if I please him more, he will bond with me. Actually, if you please him, he'll be pleased, but he loses interest in you. Let me say that again, because that's not your reality as a woman, but it's a man's reality. If things are too easy, men take it for granted. If things are too easy, men take it for granted. When there's a challenge, men will go forth. And if I ask your audience of men, what are your greatest moments in life is when he overcame a challenge. You know, when I challenge myself, I do all kinds of things to challenge myself. It makes me feel masculine. It makes me feel strong because I overcame. You know, like I jump into my cold pool sometimes. That's a challenge. Now, when the sun's not out, I don't do it. That's too hard of a challenge. <laughs> I need the sunshine afterwards. Okay. I go to the gym. You know, if you give me light weights, I don't leave feeling like Superman. You always have to push a little bit more. So you have to challenge him. You have to have a problem that he solves. So what is the problem men can solve? And we always do that dating. What can I, what do I have to do to get her to like me? What do I have to do? 
So you don't want to just so go like him and go to the man that you like more than he likes you. See, you have to be the challenge. He has to overcome some resistance in you, but to the extent that he can be successful at it. So a turnoff for a man is he takes you on a date and you start complaining about what's wrong with it. Then he feels like, well, I did my best. It wasn't good enough. So he knows if something went wrong, you don't have to point that out to him. But what you can do is always say, well, there was this or where there was that. Well, the steak was the best steak I ever had. And see, men are not like, you know, the old Jewish joke of the, of the Jewish mother who says <clears throat> uh, the, she gives his son two ties, a red tie and a blue tie. And the next day he's wearing the red tie. And she goes, what, you didn't like the blue tie? <laughs> 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 and that, that's why women think a lot. <laughs> it's really, what, it, oh, you look great today. I didn't look good yesterday. Oh, your hair looks fantastic. What well, was it good the other day? You see, that's <laughs> women don't, men don't think that way. Men, <laughs> oh, you did great. Yep, I, I like it. You know, it's just. So it's always to find something that you can appreciate and minimize the negative. Anytime, the number one thing that turns men off is he feels unsuccessful in providing a, a level of happiness for you. Doesn't have to be the greatest happiness. He just doesn't have to feel like a failure. So you find a way to build him up. Now, this is all part of building self-esteem in children as well. I remember hearing the story of a, a man who was the best bowler in the world. Now, bowling is where you take a ball and you roll it down a pathway and hits the pins and they all fall off for those who don't know how bowling is. So bowling, a long time ago, bowling didn't have gutters that would catch the ball. If the ball goes too far off to the side, it just would go off to the side. But now they have bowling alleys. They're all automated and they have little gutters. And if it goes too far off, it goes into the gutter. Well, the greatest bowler in the world was asked, why do you think you're so successful at bowling? He said, well, my dad owned the bowling alley and we didn't have all that equipment. We didn't have the gutters. So he'd be on the other end and I would throw the ball to knock down the pins. And if the ball went off to the side, my dad basically would always move a couple of pins so that I always hit something. <laughs> See, I did something and I got a reaction. That's why kids are addicted to these games. They do this, they get a reaction, get a reaction, get a reaction. And notice what children and adults are interested in now. They're interested in that, looking for the reaction, looking for the reaction. Women, on the other hand, they're all interested in comparing. Okay, that's what you do. <laughs> Always comparing. And of course, what I'll say is comparing is the thief of happiness. But it's there. It's our nature. You know, who's getting this? Who's not getting this? Am I better? Am I not? <laughs> that's all. That's very feminine, whatever. So, but basically it's challenge and what could I can solve? And men compare in terms of what can he do? Like, what's his car? What's my car? How fast can I go? How fast? You know, I buy a car on zero to 60. And though I never drive that fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but a new car comes out, they can go to zero to 60. I had to get my Tesla, which can do it in three seconds. You know, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I'm never going to drive that way. <laughs> yeah. Totally uncomfortable, but I could. Okay. So this is the idea that give the man, he's a can do guy. And when you give him the message, he's not a can do guy. And the number one way you turn a man off is by being, by being too high maintenance, which by being too offended, the total upset is to be offended okay this, this this is a very common thing now this whole woke com community is like well i'm I'll outraged that you would say that how dare you think that way why would you be that way as opposed to let's i'll give you an example of a total turnoff although this woman's still my friend but i would never marry her when i have sex with her for sure but she was a good friend she still is and she has me on a pedestal john gray such a great guy <clears throat> and i went to saudi arabia now, she's a feminist, and so she thinks Saudi Arabia is the devil and the way they treat women, and they're backward, no, no doubt about it. But I was just sharing a story. I was just teaching in Saudi Arabia. I teach around the world. I said, I was so surprised. I went to a restaurant at night because it's hot during the day. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and there were a 1,000 people at this restaurant out on the desert with tents, open-air tents. And nobody, they all had phones, but nobody was using their phones. They were all engaged. They were all talking. I never felt a more social community in my life. Now they have a lot of problems there, but I was saying, but here's one good thing about it. You know, they weren't addicted to their phones and they were talking, husbands were talking to their wives. Actually husbands were talking to other husbands, wives were talking to other wives, kids were talking to other kids, but it was, everybody was happy. You know, they were all having a positive experience. So I was, I was picking out the good and that I was surprised to see. And she was outraged, offended. How dare you say anything good about that country? So. And literally, she would not give up 
you know, how you have to admit that you are wrong for saying that. Of course, that's a total turnoff as opposed to, well, I can see that makes sense. If you want to turn a man on, he's talking and you don't agree or whatever, find something and say, well, you know, it makes sense when you say this, or you're right when you say that, as opposed to how could you say that? I'm offended by that. I'm upset by that. That's one thing. The next thing is a thing when you say, when a guy's, you're talking and guys is interrupting you, we do this. It's a foolish thing. I train men not to do it. He's interrupting you and he's making you wrong. He said, well, you shouldn't be upset about that. Well, that's not a big deal. Or why would you say that? Or that's ridiculous. You know, he doesn't know how offensive that is. And then you feel like you're, then you say the, the worst thing you can ever say. Well, you're not listening. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not listening. It, it, it's like you somehow feel entitled and ennobled to say you're not listening as opposed to, hmm, just stop talking. Hmm. Let me try saying this differently. And he'll listen. Okay, let me try saying this differently. And then, and then he might say, well, I disagree completely. Then what you say is, hmm, that, when you say this and this, that makes sense, as opposed to arguing with him. You don't need to argue, and you can't have different points of view, but we often see arguing is sort of making somebody wrong rather than disagreeing, but also making their point of view correct from their perspective. I can see your experience is this, all right? My experience is this, and what I believe to be true is this. So we want to work on these skills that don't push men away, giving him the message is that you're incompetent, you're not capable, you're unacceptable, and I have nothing to appreciate you for. <laughs> See, anything that does that, and I gave you a few examples in communication, where another turnoff is, of course, men will be turned off when a man wants to have sex with you and, and you say, don't, I don't want to go there, he's going to feel rejected. Anything that rejects a man so what you do is you should reject him, but you do it in a way that makes him feel successful. You say, you know, this isn't the right time for me. I need to go slow, but I certainly look forward to having great sex with you. I'm really turned on. Then he feels he got his message. You don't have to just comply to everything a man says or does. You can reject it, but you've got to balance it with a little consideration and caring for how he's going to hear what you say. So that's the whole thing. Any message that says to a man that he is a failure in providing a degree of happiness for you is going to be a turnoff for him. And many times you're not aware that when you're complaining about a movie or you're complaining about uh, his car or you're complaining about, oh, we're late, we're late, we're late. Well, I need to say that he knows we're late. <laughs> those are feelings that you need to share, but you, those feelings you need to share with somebody else as opposed, because it, it's just inappropriate at that moment, unless you want to turn them off. Uh, a little joke, you can drive around, you can look and you'll see that uh, whenever you see a woman driving her husband around, usually that's because she was a backseat driver, which means that when he did drive, she was obviously telling him how to drive. And that's called giving unsolicited advice. It's a very annoying thing for a man. Well, how do I how do I tell him what I want? I say, well, there's certain things you can't tell him. You just have to accept. If he's going to drive, you let him drive. And if you're going to complain, then you can drive. And so you, <laughs> you see, this is what so it's a challenge. All these things are challenges, but you can find solutions. But I so, let the man solve the problem. So you take it at another time. You can say, you know, honey, when you're driving really fast, I feel uncomfortable. And I know you don't want me to tell you to slow down. I get that. It's my mistake. I do that all the time. But if I'm uncomfortable, I know you want me to feel comfortable. And, and, you know, we are different. You like speed. I like to be comfort and safe. And so how do I let you know that I'm, I'm feeling uncomfortable? Because I know you want me to be comfortable. And I thought, well, how can I tell her to tell me to slow down? Hmm. Finally, I came up with a solution. But it also gave me more compassion for women. It's hard to communicate with men if you don't understand them. But I, the solution I came up with that worked for 30 years <laughs> was, I said, whenever you feel uncomfortable in the car, don't speak, just hold the handle. Because we had a, at that time BMW, <laughs> just grab the handle and then I'll slow down. And, you know, I'm a very compassionate, open minded guy and everything, but somehow it's always annoyance if she would verbally say, slow down. And I analyze it. It's kind of like when you're driving a car, you're, you're having to be safe with it in your mind, but you're in a dangerous situation. The more dangerous you are, you have to feel more in control. And now, she says, slow down, then my mind has to stop being in control to let her be in control of me. And I could be in danger. So that's going to cause stress reaction. So you have to just understand both points of view. And then I realized that actually driving in a way that responded to her needs 
was great foreplay for sex, as long as she knew I was doing it for her. So one of the things she didn't like was yellow lights. Okay, I speed up at a yellow light and she slows down. Okay, so when it, she's in the car, see a lot of men say, I don't wanna be controlled in the way I drive. I say, well, you're not being controlled. You got a thousand ways to drive on your own with other people or by yourself drive with her. How about making that an, a romantic opportunity? So basically it would look like this. Whenever I would be a yellow light, I'd slow down and stop, even though I could easily go through it. And I put my hand on her thigh and I say, honey, I did that for you. And she says, I know. And I really appreciate that. You see, that became a moment where she's special. I'm giving up my tendency for her. That's what makes women feel special. But I wouldn't do that if she didn't also see it as special. If she said, well, you should do that. Well, that's how people should drive. Otherwise you're unsafe then I'm not going to do that. Why? What's, what's good about that? But I can do something, you know, she has a different comfort zone. So I'm going to honor your comfort zone and I'm going to be rewarded for it. That's a turn on. A turn off would be, you shouldn't, you shouldn't drive through yellow lights. A turn off should, would be, you're driving too fast or you change lanes too often, as opposed to grab the handle and like, oh, okay, I put my hand on her thigh. I used to drive fast just to get the thigh action. I put my hand on her thigh and I said, I slowed down for you. I'm happy to do it. Nothing more wonderful that, than I know she's feeling appreciative because she did appreciate it as opposed to being this sort of opinionated, justified person and say, well, you shouldn't drive that fast or you shouldn't go through red lights. So that would be a turnoff. So those are some examples of giving men unsolicited advice, a big, big turnoff.